everyone, and welcome to another Empower 2020 panel. I am Liz Pru, VP of Marketing here at BASE, and I'll be your moderator today. I am so excited for today's session. Our title is, What Does Being a Strategic EA Mean? Assistant Leaders Share Examples and Tips. And by assistant leaders, I, of course, mean the lovely folks I have we have with us today. Um, I'll do a couple quick introductions. We have Liv Wilson, EA at LinkedIn. Hi, Liv. How are you? Hi, I'm great. So excited to be here. Awesome. Thank you for being here. And uh, for all of you watching, Liv is a high-performing, innovative, collaborative, and forward-thinking C-suite EA with extensive experience providing high-level administration, strategic, and business support to senior executives. Very, very excited to have you here. Our second panelist is Rhiannon Ward. Hi, Rhiannon. Hi. Nice to be here. Nice to have you here. So um, we, uh, I, I, I was reading your formal name. I've been calling you Reed this whole time. I was, are you, you're, you're perfect. Reed's great. Reed's great. Reed's perfect. <laughs> Reed's great. Okay. Well, everyone, Reed has spent the last 12 plus years working as a senior EA alongside leaders at Atlassian, Westfield, ING, and Canva. She's now a mindset and success coach to top leaders and mentors to EAs. So thank you so much for being here. Pleasure. And our um, final panelist is Debbie Gross. Hi, Debbie. Hey, everybody. Great to see all of you. Remote. <laughs> <laughs> Great to have you. Um, everyone, Debbie is an advocate, teacher, speaker, and author with over 30 years of experience in the administrative profession. And um, I am just thrilled to have you guys here to chat. We are in three different time zones right now, which is exciting. So I appreciate everyone's flexibility and our audience is really excited to hear all of the tips that you have for them today. Uh, to get started, I thought we could define what being a strategic assistant actually means. Because as the assistant role evolves, I feel like that definition continues mm -hmm. to evolve. So I'd love to hear from each of you what being a strategic EA means to you. Um, Liv, let's go ahead and start with you. Okay, great. Um, so I want to start by saying that I, um, early on in my career, I used to be a bit scared of the word strategic. I would hear it and I would kind of think, oh, I'm, I don't think I am strategic. Does that mean that I need to know how to run a whole business? Um, but then, you know, I kind of realized that being strategic essentially comes down to finding out what it is that your executive wants or needs and figuring out ways to help them get there. Um, so that's actually become a really um, favorite part of the job for me. It's, it's creative problem solving, um, you know, it's asking questions, it's finding out information. And ultimately what it comes down to is uh, I think being proactive versus reactive. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I Absolutely. Debbie, do you want to go next and kind of walk through what it be? Yeah, um, for me, being strategic, along with what Liv has said, is I think it's thinking differently about the role uh, of an executive assistant or administrative assistant. And it's going beyond, to me, the day-to-day -day check the box, I got it done task mentality. Uh, it's really about uh, getting and gaining a greater understanding of the business, both the company uh, the organization and the executives that you support, as Liv had mentioned, asking questions, uh, as well as really understanding uh, how you can add greater value in, in your role. I mean, we're getting past the doing the expense reports and travel itineraries right now. So it is about changing uh, in a shift in the way that we think. It's a mind shift. And that's the way I look at being strategic. Wonderful. Bree, I'll hand it to you. Yeah, I love it. I, I absolutely agree with everything Debbie and Liv have said. It's so spot on. And I think for me, um, being strategic, it changes how we be strategic working alongside our execs changes, right? The things that we do to be strategic change. But the way that I sense check whether or not I'm operating in a strategic capacity is to go, where is my head at? Am I thinking about the now or am I thinking about the three, six, 12 months, two years into the future? Um, that's a really great indicator of whether or not you're being strategic. And also, are you thinking about what's aligned with the business objectives? As, as these other two ladies have mentioned, what's aligned with the business's mission and what our execs are trying to achieve? And if you're not doing that, you're probably not being strategic. Mm -hmm. that, that's wonderful. And that leads mm -hmm. us, that, it's perfect leading us into our next topic. And I might just let you elaborate on that um, because I feel like you're just about to go into more detail of how... Um, 
how can assistants start doing these things if they know I want to be more aligned to my executive, I want to be more strategic. Is there anything that they can start to do in their daily workflow or it, unique ways they can start engaging with their executive to open up those opportunities? Um, I will go in and jump in on that one. And, and one of the things that I learned early on in my career in terms of what I call strategic thinking is starting to do more of what I call analysis of how my executive is spending their time, um, doing the research, you know, looking at workloads, time allocations. Um, I took it beyond, you know, just managing that calendar every day and I would literally capture a lot of data and then um, I would sit down with my executive because I believe executives make their decisions based on data, not on just assumption. And I remember very early in, in doing this that I sat down with my boss at that time, John, and I said, John, in a quarter, and I would do it by quarter, in a quarter, you have spent 60% of your time on business operations. You've spent 30% on um, sales and 10% in uh, and with the employees. And I remember him just looking at me with this big, he couldn't believe it, uh, look on his face. And he said, that can't be right. And I said, well, it is right. Because let's face it, executives are going 90 miles an hour. They're not looking at their counter. They're just going from meeting to meeting to meeting. And so he turned to me and he said, I don't want that. That's not what I want. I want to spend more time with the customers, less time in business operations, and more time with employees. Well, that immediately allowed him to make some decisions and allowed me to actually start to align the priorities and how I was going to continue to manage the calendar. So that's one, just one simple way that I started to take the role much broader than just the day to day. Um, and it, it worked wonderfully well. Uh, yeah, I couldn't agree more with what Debbie said. Um, and um, to kind of expand on a couple of things that have already been uh, mentioned, um, read everything, the company newsletters, you know, the strategic, the business reports, everything, even, even if you don't understand what you're reading, it's so important to really know what the company objectives are. And then on the kind of next level, as Debbie said, you know, talking to your executive and finding out what they want and what they're looking for. And then you can always come back to those things. So as an example for me with the data, you know, one of my execs is always saying, oh, I need to have a one-on-one, -on -one, a regular one-on-one -on -one with this person and that person. And I kind of compiled them all and I said, you know that you're having 40 hours a month of just one-on-ones, you know, is that helping you achieve what you've said you need to achieve? You know, so yeah, that data piece is, is really strong because executives, you know, um, in the moment will say, oh yeah, you know, they like the idea of having a regular one-on-one -on -one with this person. But, um, but yeah, when you give them the data in black and white, kind of saying, if you're spending this much time doing this, then you're not able to spend the time doing the things that we've agreed you, you want to achieve. So yeah, I, mm -hmm. think, I think that's great. And, um, you know, read everything. Um, and um, I think the other, the other part of it as well is, um, you know, just being really clear and checking in, as Debbie said, you know, every kind of quarter, are these still your, um, your priorities and objectives? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That Can I chime in here for just a second before oh. Rhiannon? And um, when you say read everything, one of the things I've noticed uh, with executive assistants is they don't pull their head up from the desk very often. For example, in the U.S., when I ask an executive, uh, an executive assistant group, how many of you read USA Today? Not a hand goes up. How many of you read Wall Street Journal? Not a hand goes up. So it's not just reading everything about your company. It's beginning to see how the world affects your company, your organization, your stock price, the economy, you know, world economy, politics. Um, it's just amazing what there is out there. And for us to really be strategic, I think we need to lift our head up a little bit further and start to look at the big picture uh, because that will ultimately, I think, affect the, the ultimate business in some shape, way, or form. So I agree with you, reading everything you can, but go bigger. Mm -hmm. That's great advice. Yeah, great point. Yeah. Bree, I'll talk yeah, to you. Totally agree with everything both of these ladies have said. Um, taking a really holistic approach, intimately knowing, intimately knowing the business goals, your exec's goals, like I mentioned before, and go as so far as to Yes, read the news. I, every time I start with a new executive, I like to find out what's helped shape the way they think. 
What have they read that's been really instrumental in their growth? What have they listened to? Who have they been mentored by? So that I can go and learn the ins and outs of that as well. And we're kind of then thinking on the same wavelength. I also go and speak to the entire leadership that's uh, leadership team that surrounds my executive to find out what's going on from their perspective because our CEO, our exec often only sees part of it, right? And a one way in which we can be strategic is to bring them that information and bubble things up to the surface that they otherwise wouldn't be aware of. So um, that's all I'd add to that. But yeah, yeah so many ways to be strategic. Agree. Yeah, yeah um, me too. And I think, you know, relationships are such a huge part of this role. Mm -hmm. and, and having good relationships with, with people outside of just your executive and even their executive mm -hmm. team, having good relationships across the business enables you to feed that information to your executive and be more strategic about, you know, the kind of um, culture and, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, have a pulse on what's going on beyond um, what your executive mm -hmm. can see. So I think, yeah, relationships is, is a really crucial part. To be well, you represent your executive and your their brand in number one. Number two, in my case, I was uh, John's friend de liaison, meaning that he was traveling so often, not in the office. So I made it a point to know not only the people within the company, but who were important to him outside of the company, friends, business customers, and sometimes when John wasn't even in the office, when they would call, they would talk to me and they would share with me, well, here's what's going on with me and how are you? And the next thing you know, now you, again, you have this information so that when John would call and I said, oh, by the way, Jack called and you know, he just, he just moved to, uh, and I would give him an update and he would be so appreciative because he didn't have that time to keep those relationships alive and well. So we strategically meaning we mm -hmm. are liaisons for them both internally and externally their friends the organization everything so absolutely getting to know building mm -hmm. relationships are very important i think mm -hmm. in terms of that whole strategic uh position that we play mm -hmm. i love that i think mm -hmm. um it's, it's funny no oh, go ahead sorry liz i was going to say back when we were when we were in the physical office, which, um, you know, LinkedIn in Australia at the moment anyway, we're, we're all working remotely, but back when we were in a physical office, I would, you know, often go for a walk and, you know, and just check in and chat to people, not necessarily about business, but about what's going on in their lives. Now, I think some people might have looked at that and seen, oh, look at Liv just wandering around, just having a good old chat with everyone, isn't it? You know, yeah. isn't that great? But that is part of being strategic as well. And now that we've moved to virtual, I still make it a point to send a little Teams to someone, not because I need anything from them, but to say, oh, how was your son's first birthday? I know that he turned one last week. What did you get up to? And, you know, just building those relationships, you know, outside of the specific direct work environment, mm -hmm. you know, those are things that enable you to have the insights that mm -hmm. you need to be able to let your boss and your executive know what's happening mm -hmm. with, with individuals and the business. So sorry, I, I jumped in there, Liz. No, you're <laughs> good. It, it, I mean, it, you actually... <laughs> went on to what I was going to ask you to elaborate on. You said something earlier too about aligning to company objectives and knowing what's going on with the company and with everyone working remotely and that looking like a more permanent situation, um, the idea of the future of work and how, what this looks like moving forward. I think uh, the topic of aligning yourself to a company's OKRs, which essentially is, are those leaders and executives um, objectives and key results as well it's just it's so important to align yourself to what's going on and then on top of that having those relationships to see how you know personally what's going on in their lives but how they're working within the business and working towards those goals as well i mean that information is just invaluable mm -hmm. yeah really. absolutely absolutely um and i i have to say that the more we're connected uh, here's the other thing I, I think goes in line with being strategic and everything that you're saying. Look for ways that you can actually add more value. For example, uh, if you're starting to see a problem, for example, one of the clients I have, she noticed that everybody was just reaching out to her and her team constantly using Slack and instant, you know, uh, texting and phone calls and emails. And she said, enough is enough. We have a problem. So what she ended up doing is developing what she called a communication protocol. And that communication protocol became very valuable for her whole organization. That in itself, in my opinion, is a strategic way of adding value 
solving problems, being innovative. And she was, even her own CEO was impressed with how things started to smooth out. So we need to look beyond, like I said, the cube or the laptop and how do we add more value? How can we do and change and, and keep things uh, and move things in the right direction? I love that. And I, Rhea, I'd love to, to hand it to you and elaborate that on a little bit more because you are um, full-time now as a mindset and um, success coach. And I think that is such a huge part of that in focusing on, you know, personally where you want to be and looking at how you get there. Can you talk a little bit about, um, this kind of leans into our final topic a little bit of recommendations for growth and ongoing professional development, but I'd love to hear why that's so important to you and some, how you approach that when you're working with assistants. How I approach like professional growth and development? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm really passionate about this, which is why I moved into coaching. But one of the things that I just want to table very quickly is we've, we've got such an opportunity at the moment. This time that we're going through is like we can choose to go down one path or down another. And this is really an opportunity for you to create the role that you want, right? A lot of normal things are falling off our plate. And the, the beauty of an EA role is you can figure out for you what you need to get from it whilst also serving, us, uh, serving your executive and your team and your company and figure out what you need to fuel your next stage of growth. So it's so important to take a step back and go, what do I want from this? What, what do I want to learn? Who do I want to surround myself with so that I can move into the next iteration of my career? Uh, that's something I'm very, very passionate about. That's a great point. Yeah, that, I mean, it is, it's, it's the, you know, silver lining of the situation is that you really do have the opportunity to focus on where you can grow within your company, what you want to do with your role. Um, I love that. Do you, um, because, uh, Liv, go ahead. Yeah. I was going to say, because the EA role encapsulates so many different aspects of business, you know, you're doing project management, event management, although that's more virtual event management now, communications, you know, to Ree's point, there are so many kind of different areas that you can kind of build on and, mm -hmm. and sort of choose to, um, you know, really elevate yourself in, in those areas. So that's one of the beauties, you know, there, there are some issues that come with, the, uh, you know, the EA being such a big umbrella and so many things falling under it. But one of the positives is that, you know, you really get that um, exposure to so many different um, areas of business and, and as I said as we said you know you can really kind of build your skills in, in the area that really kind of lights you up. So. You know it takes being curious. Uh, curiosity is I think really key also for success in the role and, and especially if you're deciding to be strategic. For example there's a lot of new technologies out there. Um, in fact that probably the number mm -hmm. one uh, skill competency that's going to come up for all of us as we we continue to move through the remote uh, pandemic is video technologies and learning the various video technologies, whether your company uses it or not. I have to, being in my own business as you are, Rihanna, and we have to learn a lot of different technologies that are either going to be successful for us or not. So I would say one of the ways we can develop ourselves, especially right now, is to really uh, become an explorer in some respects of how does that work? How does that, how could I use that? Maybe I could give this to my executive. Maybe this is an app we should be using, for example, shareware. And obviously security is a big one now too. So I think we should be continuing to explore, develop ourselves and our talent uh, to become even more valuable uh, in the role. And it's not always easy, but I do think right now is the best time, as Rihanna said, to develop ourselves in areas we probably wouldn't have even taken the time to do uh, when we were in the office. Um, so that would be just another idea that I want to throw out there. Totally. Um, I mean, even with this virtual event we're putting on, I've learned so much about mm. video tools and streaming and all of this, but it really is. And I think... Um, I love that you use the word explore because as a marketer, we always say experiment and outside of the marketing role, that's kind of scary because with executive assistants, you don't have the, you can't real like you are account, you're responsible for so many critical parts of the business that I imagine experimentation, there really isn't room for it at, at times. And so I love the word explore because that, um, 
that really opens up the opportunity to, you know, hone your skills or look at new tools and things of that nature. So that's great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I'd love to hear from each of you uh, any sort of um, check-in or cadence that maybe you each have for looking at your goals, whether those goals are defined or whether they're just like a, you know, like a monthly look at, okay, what am I doing? What should I be doing better? Is there anything that you do on some sort of consistent cadence to help you grow in your role? It's a good question. I have a ton of goals every day. I mean, I, I tons, mm -hmm. <laughs> tons of goals. In fact, today I have two very key goals uh, to focus in on. So I, I do a lot of planning. So, you know, I, you know, every week or by the end of every week, I'm looking at the next week's calendar and the calendar after that, I look at deadlines. I use, I call it project management 101. I'll look at the deadline of when I have to have this done. And then I start to back it up and start to, I actually start to schedule myself and I build blocks in of where I need to start to focus in on so that by the time that deadline reaches, uh, the deadline, by the way, my deadlines are more aggressive. Therefore, if I miss by a day, I'm good. Um, so I do a Sunday uh, morning, here's my week, here's my month, have I, you know, and um, the other thing that I do um, is I sort of do this as a routine at night now. I didn't do this before, but now at night I will, I have a, a little diary journal next to my bed and I write down all the things that I've accomplished in the day. Um, because I think we we're working so fast every day trying to get this, that, and the other done that we don't take a step back and say, wow, I got that done today. And it reaffirms that I'm marching ahead and I'm moving in the right direction. Um, so that's just, I started incorporating that last month and, and, uh, it's, it's actually really been helpful for me to, to pat myself on the back and say, yeah, you're, you're really meeting those goals and destinations that you're looking for. So that's just one of the routines in, in ways of me doing sanity checks on a regular basis. I don't know about everybody else, but that's how I've been doing it. Yeah, I think that's so important, Debbie, to, um, uh, to kind of stop and have a moment to just really acknowledge everything that we've done. Because as you said, it's so easy to just kind of be on to the next thing straight away. So one of the things I know really you do something similar to this, but I, I kind of have just a, an Excel spreadsheet. It's called my bragging sheet. Um, and I sort of at the end of the day or the week, I go in there and just dump in there, you know, the things that I've achieved or the things that I've completed. Um, and not only um, does that serve the purpose of kind of, you know, ha having a moment to congratulate myself on everything that I've been able to do, but it's also great to refer back to when it comes to performance reviews, you know, Excellent. and uh, going back to your um, executive and, and, you know, listing all the things that you've done, um, you know, over the course of the last quarter or, or the last half. Um, in terms of kind of goals, I have like a master list and, and that kind of contains all, you know, everything. Um, and then I try and pull across um, certain things, you know, each, uh, each week or month that I want to achieve. And I think another, um, another tip is that, um, you know, if I have goals uh, in my personal life, for example, my sister's 40th birthday is coming up and I'm compiling a video for her. So that's something that I want to do, but I would just slot in five minutes kind of on any given day, just to, even if it's just very small progress, but just to keep on making very small progress on, on kind of the bigger goals that you need to achieve. So um, yeah, to Ree's point earlier, I try not to just be fixed on the here and now, but kind of be bringing in things that I'm working towards as well. Um, but I, I, I do my daily to-do list at the end of the day, you know, I kind of look at it, tick off what I've done, you know, list the things I need to do the next day. So um, yeah, big, big fan of the list as most VAs are, I believe. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so I kind of take a bit of a, I don't know if it's an unconventional approach to goals. So my goals in terms of my growth and development are more like a vision. So one of the um, things that I've observed in my clients when we try and set goals for them is that they get so hung up on setting the perfect goal that they don't take any action and they get too attached to what, what do I call that goal and what's the output? And so um, personally in my life, I'm the same. Like I struggle with what that goal should be. And so I create a vision for what the impact I want to have is. What's the impact I want to have? How do I want to feel? What do I want to have achieved personally? And that's not necessarily associated with like doing a thing or achieving 
Apex. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit different. Um, and I set my vision yearly, but it changes as well. Like it changes all the time. It morphs, it evolves just like I do as I grow and develop as a person. And then I do start to chunk it down a little bit. So I think about, okay, like if this is where I'm headed, what do I need to do now? What do I need to do now to move in the right direction? And I'm very focused on just taking messy action, just doing something to propel myself forward to the vision that I'm creating for myself. I love it. I love that. Mm. Yeah, I love it too. And, and it makes me think of the, um, the phrase that perfection is the enemy of progress. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I love that. That's great. That's so good. Yeah, I, I do find that a lot of executive, you know, it's interesting if you ask an executive assistant or a ministry assistant, what is their goal for the next year or the next two to three years? They don't know. They haven't really thought about it. And so uh, I think I've learned a lot in my world and my career teaching and training and also being an EA that you got to have a goal, but then you actually have to set the plan. Now, in your case, Rihanna, I love the visionary idea, and I guess I do have a huge vision on, in some cases, but it, it, it has to become tangible enough that it's on paper, and then you have a plan, and you, you say, okay, by this date, because I also find that people will set a goal, but they don't really set a date or a plan. You know, like, I'm going to take this class, or I'm going to go to do this. Um, and so I think it behooves us to become valued and become more strategic. We really do need to have those goals. Mm -hmm. We have to have them little goals, big goals, visions. They mm -hmm. have to be there. Uh, that's what makes us successful in life. That's what makes us successful in our career. So anybody that's listening, if they don't have career goals, they probably should start thinking about them. And one thing I consistent, I'm here. Yeah, and Debbie, you mentioned earlier. Right, go ahead. <laughs> so okay. I was just, just going to no, say, Debbie fine. mentioned earlier about actually scheduling time to do this. And I think, you know, as EAs, we, it's so easy mm -hmm. to get caught up in, you know, the daily, you know, mm -hmm. grind and, you know, our jobs are busy and there's always something to do. So I think it's really important to um, specifically set aside that time, whichever works best for you, maybe first thing in the morning before you open mm -hmm. your emails or last thing at night after mm -hmm. you've closed your emails. But it's really important to, you know, kind of actually set aside that time and invest mm -hmm. in you and mm -hmm. your development. Mm -hmm. So, you know, e e even if it's five, 10 minutes a day, morning or afternoon, mm -hmm. that's, um, that's you know, that's, a decent amount of time every week so yeah, yeah. i love it that's so true i think sorry liz i keep on i keep no, on talking you're, it's, people are here to listen to you they don't care about me they're like there's the marketer <laughs> acting like she knows what she's talking about again no i'm I, I love it because um it's so great about all these sessions we're having is that uh everyone can learn something from this whether you're an administrative professional you know if you're in any professional role this is all great advice and as it you know, pertains to um, assistance, what I'm hearing consistently from all of you is that we all need to reward ourselves more and allow ourselves to be rewarded. And that doesn't just mean, you know, having, um, you know, a notebook or a sheet, which I think everyone should have, and I'm totally going to do and steal from you guys. <laughs> but it's allowing, rewarding yourself with those 15 minutes. Like mm -hmm. you're allowed those 15 minutes to center mm -hmm. yourself. I um, like I even made a rule in one of another webinar we did uh, a few months back. One of the speakers said, I don't allow myself to be on the computer while I'm eating, which sounds like kind of weird at first, but you think about how often you eat through lunch or you know, you eat through your coffee break or whatever. And I'm like, that's something I can do today. I can easily start doing that. And I've started to when I take lunch, I don't check my email, I don't do anything, and sometimes that forces me to look at okay, well now I can look at the rest of my, my yeah. to-do list, but not answer to other things. Like I'm going to focus on myself. So I think that's I have a funny story about that, Liz. When I was working at Cisco one day, uh, I found a French fry under my, under my keyboard. I don't know how long it had been there, but you know, I swear I had been, wor I worked every day, ate my lunch and worked. I had a dry cleaning bill that you can't believe. It was just, we do need to take step back and recharge and refresh the brain. So don't eat at your desk. Don't, don't lose out on at least a few minutes of quiet time to get yourself recharged so that you don't find a French fry under your keyboard. <laughs> I love that. That was a sign. That was definitely a sign. I knew that I, I should stop doing that. <laughs> 
Yeah, I've um, I've I've heard the no eating at your desk rule uh, referred to as no al desco. <laughs> 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 um, by the way, Liz, I just wanted to jump jump on what you said before about learning from each other because I think that's a really important point because um, you know that's why I love doing things like this. I, I today I have learned you know little tips and tricks from Re and Debbie. You know they've been really valuable for me, and I think learning from each other is such a great source mm -hmm. of information. Mm -hmm. You know because we all face different um, challenges and we all take different approaches to things, mm -hmm. and so I think. Um, you know, sharing, sharing the knowledge amongst us is just so valuable. Um, so yeah, I just really wanted to add to that point. That's a great point. I'm curious, um, that makes me think if there are, because there are so many assistant communities, like we're streaming in one right now, of course, the base community, but is there anywhere you go, what, and whether it's an assistant focused community or another outlet that you use for inspiration to find ways to be more strategic in your role, if you're kind of looking at I'd really love to get involved with this part of the business more. Like, mm -hmm. do you have any methods of exploring or researching or tips to share? Well, I'm going to jump in on this one quickly. Um, <clears throat> one of the things I learned on in my career, I, ne I used to never go to any administrative conferences. I didn't have time, just didn't have time, didn't see a value to it. And then I got talked into going to my very first administrative conference. And I was so unbelievably floored that I had missed all those years because it was like getting a vitamin B shot mm -hmm. and I was motivated. I was inspired. I took tons and tons of notes and I came back with all these great ideas. And uh, I would really strongly encourage the audience to, to branch out and the best way to learn especially from others is if you take advantage of some of these great conferences that are now virtual so you can sit in your own you know in your own house and and watch it for example executive secretary live they put on amazing learning uh conference uh office dynamics don't don't think it's all got to be you know uh, well here's the thing make the time because you will meet people you will learn things you'll come back totally more jazzed about what you do. You'll learn some new tricks and tips. And so I really want to encourage this audience to branch out that way. I think you'll find it very, very valuable for you, for your organization, for the executives that you support. I don't think I ever walked away from a conference without one thing that I did learn. I learned so many things. Mm -hmm. Well, Ray and I actually met at an EA uh, workshop, didn't we? Oh. We did several, several years ago. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a, a really great connection and we, you know, I've learned a lot from Re, and, you know, we've kind of been together through, you know, different um, uh, parts of each other's careers, you know, we've been there to support each other through a lot of things. So, yeah, I mean, exactly to your point, Debbie, you know, you mm -hmm. come away not just with knowledge, but with relationships that we were talking about mm -hmm. this morning that's so important. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Rhea, I cut you off there. So important. That's okay. <laughs> I think, yeah, absolutely. Exactly what Debbie and Liv have said. And I take a very holistic approach to um, the way that I want to grow and develop. And not only am I connecting with our other assistants through events, and by the way, some events are better than others, but if you're going to an event and you're not taking something away, it means you weren't looking for it, right? Because there's always things to learn in every forum, every day, there's something to learn from everyone. And um, I, I expand it beyond the EA community as well. Like I want to learn from other people in business because I am moving into that, you know, strategic position. I want to learn beyond what currently exists. I want to network with other women and men in business and learn from people that I really admire. Um, build that personal advisory board. Like Liv is on my personal advisory board. I have a great crew of people that I bounce things off all the time. I've worked with mentors and coaches along the way, Deb being one of them. And I think there's just, you can't learn too much. You can't invest too much. And what I mean by investing, it's not just money, it's time, energy, it's focus, all those things. Mm -hmm. So I think um, it's literally the best thing you could invest in yourself, literally, mm -hmm. and the ROI is infinite. I want to be on your personal advisory board. I'm, I'm bummed that you haven't invited me yet. <laughs> I'll send you a full invitation. <laughs> oh, I love that so much. That is such great advice. Have a personal advisory board and invest in yourself. I think that's great. Mm -hmm. um, and for those watching now, uh, I know we've said this in a couple other panels, but these are opportunities where you can just like, just drop your LinkedIn profile and see if someone mm -hmm. wants to connect or drop your email. Mm -hmm. Like this is, this is why we're all here. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and yeah, take advantage of these opportunities. That's great. Yeah, I created a private Facebook group called uh, the EA's Guide to Going Remote. No, actually it's called the EA Rockstar Virtual Edition. So there are lots of different um, groups, uh, for example, in Facebook that you can join. And, and that's way, another way you can share information with each other. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of avenues to, to do that. Lots yeah. of avenues to do that. Yeah. And Simon, what you do? Like what, it's got to feel right to you. It's got to feel like a good fit for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, yeah and there are loads of great um, EA groups on, on LinkedIn as well. Mm -hmm. And I think really kind of tailoring your feed on LinkedIn as well. Right. Um, so that you're seeing things that are relevant and interesting to you. Um, mm -hmm. You know, because as you're, as you're just sort of scrolling through, you, you easily pick up kind of little bits here and there that you know you kind of think oh yeah that looks good I'll try that and mm -hmm. um, so I think yeah making your um uh tailoring your feed so that you're seeing right. really valuable stuff is another great tip mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's such great advice um I think we are we are about out of time but that was such a wonderful topic to end on I think that's a great uh call to action we can give our listeners and those attending right now is to use these opportunities to connect um, I love that you brought up Office Dynamics. We have our CEO page did a webinar with Joan. Joan's a keynote at um, this conference as well. And, um, it, oh, Executive Secretary, there, yeah, that was a great conference. Paige spoke at that one too. So there are, I think there'll be even more opportunities with everything going virtual, which mm -hmm. is great. There's no way we could have put this event on with all of you wonderful professionals. It was just so great. It was like, oh my gosh, we can have everybody because everyone's at home. <laughs> So, but for everyone listening, that's an opportunity to um, maybe hear from some people that you normally wouldn't have. Uh, mm -hmm. because everyone has weirdly a little bit more time now that we're, we have more time and also no time at all. So I really <laughs> appreciate everyone yeah. joining today. Thank you yeah. so much. Oh, thank you for having us. And hey, I'm honored. Yeah, thank you so much. Really enjoyed that. That time flew. I know. Oh, I was, was going to say that, Ree. Like, time flies when you're having fun. I feel like yeah. we could go on for at least another 40 minutes. We certainly minutes. could. <laughs> That's great. Thank you all. All right. Thank you, Liz. Thank you.